on explorations this time. Survival of the fittest and the fastest in the evolutionary jungle. This is Explorations, how man has become the master of evolution. Earth is a vast and fertile place. It has on it all the resources needed to sustain life. It is sometimes a hostile place. The forces it unleashes can destroy life. It's here that we have made a home for ourselves. Since our ancestors left Africa 100,000 years ago, we have colonized all seven continents. We have been living in the frozen wastes of the Arctic for over 4,000 years. In the deserts for even longer, with the exception of a few islands and very high altitudes, by 10,000 years ago, we had successfully inhabited almost every part of the planet. Our ability to adapt ensured our survival and our future on Earth. By the time you have the first modern humans, they all have the potential of invention that we have. And I think that's actually what makes them modern. They can invent solutions to new problems. Our long-term survival was assured when we began to harness and cultivate the resources around us. From the hunter-gatherer cultures of our early ancestors, we soon became farmers. For the past 12,000 years, our growing agricultural and technological skills have guaranteed our food. We have created the conditions needed for the sustenance and growth of our species. Without agriculture, the worldwide human population, which today stands at 6 billion, might only have reached a total of 30 million. Today, agriculture is so highly developed we can grow food in the most unpromising environments. We can intensively cultivate the produce we want with the taste, size and colour we want, when we want it. Every single vegetable we eat today has been carefully altered by selective breeding. Our specialization enables us to interpret how plants react to environmental conditions and so ensure their growth and our food sources. Now, scientists hope they might be able to get flowers and plants to tell us when they're in distress, too hot or too cold, or under a pest attack. The plants could do this by glowing. We can't ask plants how they're feeling and what's happening to them, so we need to have some way of understanding what's going on inside them. A crop plant can be put into extremes of temperature. It can be attacked by pests. Things like fungi can attack it. Things like mildews can attack it. Uh, winds, strong winds, mechanical movement can, can also damage and upset plants. And all these stresses are the types of stresses that we always see an increase in light production when we apply these to our plants. 